but what are we asking for? Like what, what are the things that we are for that we want to see happen? Not just all the bad stuff because the bad stuff, yes, it can unite us and we can feel this fury of being against, but it doesn't, it's not gonna lead us to the next step of change and what that means. So welcome back everybody, Rich Brubaker, Shanghai based social entrepreneur in sunny Bangkok today, meeting uh, at the International Association of Volunteer Efforts, IAVE conference, we're on the sideline, and I've met with my good friend uh, Hannah here, who I've known for a number of years, has been behind the expansion of Good Deeds Day, which is 108 countries after the last eight years of international expansion, 12 years uh, in total work, and we break down mega events, building community, and getting people in 108 countries to do good. So do me a favor, <laughs> uh, tell the community a little about yourself uh, and the work that you're doing through Good Deeds Day. Awesome, so I'm Hannah. We unite people in doing good. That's the idea. Short and sweet and simple. And it's on a single day, 108 countries. How did this come about? And what's been the last few years of development for you guys? So Good Deeds Day is supported by a volunteer center called Ruch Tova. We're the Volunteer Center of Israel and we connect people to opportunities of volunteering. That's what we do. Um, but we were looking for more ways to engage people. We were looking for um, other ways that we can bring people in and connect them to this idea of um, volunteering. But for us, it's, uh, it's not just about the volunteering. Volunteering is sort of seen as a, a higher level way of engagement. We connect people in the idea of doing good. Okay. That's something that each of us can relate to no matter where we're from, right? It's totally cross-cultural and border. Mm -hmm. And we all relate to it in our own ways, but collectively it's kind of this shared value okay. so that's where we catch people in this like simple idea do a good deed do good be good incorporate that in your everyday lives yeah. um, and then come out on one day of the year to get a taste of that and the goal is that people get hooked they um, drink the kool-aid and they want to continue it's a fun day it's a positive day um, but we're really aiming for long-term impact so yeah. it's so, through the day itself. That's kind of good. Get, so 108 countries, how many of those are where you have offices? How many of those are through partnerships? And then how do the partners find you as part of this process? So we have no offices abroad. Okay. We're based in Israel. That's where our headquarters is. That's so where the volunteer center is. 100%. Okay. We do have a few coordinators that are part of the Good Deeds A team abroad but it's their um, it's their work but mostly kind of part-time and and they coordinate good deeds day in their region but it's about three people wow. and the rest of it is through working one-on-one -on -one with organizations and corporations to help them use good deeds day as a tool because gotcha. that's the idea at the end of the day is that um, it's a platform for you for your organization to grow, to spread awareness, to elevate the profile of your organization, um, to gain strong partnerships. That's yeah. like the idea and that's a lot of uh, what we're doing in that realm is through mega events. Good, but what does that really mean? I mean, is there like a, you have specific issues, you have specific formats, is it all open for suggestion, just as long as it's good? It's like all open for interpretation. Okay. It's like, okay. what does doing good mean to you? What, what do you identify with? What right. causes are you passionate about? What's meaningful to you? Because that's, that's what's important at the end of the day is not what I think is important ab about you know changing the world or doing good. It's what you. It's how you connect to it. Right, right. So I mean, we we see it as a spectrum. We see it as. On, on one side, even a smile is a good deed. Even a smile means doing good as someone walks by and you smile at them and they get all warm inside and, and they feel great about that. Like, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the other spectrum, on the other side of it, um, and where we're trying to move people along 
is more of the involving involvement of volunteering of doing good with an organization with um, a specific population so okay. but it's up to you it's up to yeah. you how you see yourself and and what you are passionate about now there's a lot of movements that are trying to become movements uh, we've seen extinction rebellion you have Greta you've had obviously the cop run-up um, but they stall mm -hmm. they, they they get a couple markets and then um, what is it about your movement that really just took off and, and how fast did it really happen? So first, how fast did it happen? We started Good Deeds Day about 12 years ago in Israel and it, in Israel it really took off fast. In the first year we had 7,000 people and that was after a few months of planning. Mm -hmm. And then from there it was a snowball effect and after a few years we were kind of realizing we were onto something and that that's when it went global in 2011. Okay. So since 2011, it's just the growth has continued and it's because it's simple. It's because of the, the idea of doing good is something we can all relate to. And I think that's why it's grown in, in such enormous ways is because everyone can relate. Everyone wants to um, feel like they can make a difference and they can and yeah. we're, we, we're basically a low bearing fruit, right? It's something easy to take hold of. So we're in 108 countries and, and, and that varies. That means yeah. in some countries we've got some people, some activities, and other countries it's massive. It's like the whole country's taken part. We have mega events. We've got yeah. volunteering for a month. Mm. Um, it just kind of depends on how people are, are latching on to it. You've removed all the friction to participate. But there's got to be something on the other side of that that's like you wished it was different. Like it was, there was more standard. There's more, you know, like kind of everyone's going to mega event. There's more structure. Like we all gravitate towards that. Um, is there any downside to this? Well, I'd say the the complexity of that yeah. is that sometimes people love it when you just tell them what to do right. and you just give them the instructions what's the theme poverty okay we're doing poverty or women or what's the theme and and sometimes people look to us to to tell them how to do good or specifically how to take part mm -hmm. and the way we handle that and, and kind of deal with it is is really by working with and it's usually with organizations that are that are leading something so we work with them we try to do an analysis of what's important to them of what issues they want to focus on and beyond that how they can frame and use good deeds day as a platform to achieve that just on my phone by email do you have like a questionnaire you send them like what's that onboarding process and how do you because you've got a lot of people you're talking to, like how do you manage that yourself? Right, so it depends on how people contact us. I mean, they, they find out about us through word of mouth or through social media mostly. Yeah. So we just kind of meet them on that platform where they're at. Um, we do a lot of phone calls, a lot of Skype. That's okay. kind of the main way. And then we continue it usually by phone. If we can catch someone in person, obviously, even better but you know we're a very small team there's only yeah. a couple of us so we can only be in so many places at once you know one of the things I, I talk about a lot is like it's when you do these decentralized models it's it's a great way to get a lot of people started but then the long term becomes questionable because whether or not you, their brand your brand their mission your mission maintain alignment mm -hmm. um, becomes you know it becomes challenging so how have you dealt with that because I'm sure that you've had some groups I'll talk more internationally, you know, since 2011, like, do the, groups, do the groups continue to grow with you? Do you see up and down? Do you see people drop off after a couple of years? Like, what's your experience there? Pretty much most people do continue to take part year after year. And we actually did a study, uh, a survey of a number of years ago in Israel specifically to understand more about what's happening in the country. And 90% continued the next year and 50% of the people continued volunteering okay. at, the, at the organization. So it's a so. great way to just activate people and exactly. keep them. Exactly, okay. and, and that's, that's exactly what we're going for, is to take people on that journey from doing good to being more engaged. Okay. Um, is it important for you to know how many people came in for the first time through Good Z's Day and then, then continue doing good? Like, do you try and, like, how do you measure that success? So, 
We collect data every year around Good Deeds Day. It's, we have a registration process. Sure. We have a form on our website. That's how we know what people are up to. That's how we know um, which issues they're tackling. And we've also, in the last three years, have paired it with the SDGs. Okay. So we know which specific goals people are focusing on. We know which countries are mm. focusing on goals. So we do map it out each year. Okay. And that's what we're looking for, to see the trends, to see what the issues people are interested in, um, also in terms of numbers and growth. We work with organizations kind of in, in, with a long run, long term lens. Right. So each year, most organizations do continue to build upon what they do. So they may start with an activity that's maybe part of their monthly calendar or they made, or maybe they do a step up. But um, once they start, and that's yeah. the whole idea that is just to begin with something, they continue to build on it, not just from year to year with Good Deeds Day, but throughout the year itself. So okay. um, creating stronger connections and relationships uh, with corporates or yeah. government or whatever it is. So we see pretty significant growth of the projects, but also just the scope of what the organizations are doing like year to year. Talking about relationships, I think another thing is how do you build a sense of community between the different project sites and affiliates and countries like is this something of a focus because I can imagine like 108 projects within a week I mean how you even report that has just got to be incredibly complicated how you think through that but then how do you maintain or are you trying to maintain like an ongoing community and what are the platforms that you found work best for that so I think the first thing is the visual aspect the fact that the Good Deeds Day t-shirt is worn by we send t-shirts all over the world. So we have some millions of shirts circulating okay. the earth right now that people have worn over the years. So the fact that visually you can see it and the t-shirts are in your local language. So okay. we have all the shirts say doing good on the front in whatever language you desire. On the back, Good Deeds Day in your language and your logo of your organization and maybe your partners if you're if you're choosing that. Gotcha. So that I think is is really important first in terms of brand identity and connectedness. I think the fact that um, people connect to doing good, but people also connect to being part of something greater than themselves. And people yeah. want to be part of something. So they can see, I'm doing something in my you know, home city of Sao Paulo, but I can see mm. in the US or Rome or other places that not only are they doing it too, but with the yeah. same look, the same feeling, the same positive energy that I'm doing it. So right, right. I think one, that creates um, connection mm -hmm. um, and two is that we through our website we have all of the materials and logos and things and three we do regional conferences so okay. in the last so many three years we've been <laughs> it's hard to keep track these days yeah, yeah. Um, we've been adding sporadically but we've been bringing regions together so just before yeah. this conference here and for the, the Yave conference we had a two-day Asia-Pacific regional conference. It's, a, it's more of a condensed version of our usual conferences. That's a big part of the network that, that we're building because you get awesome. to meet face-to-face -face and yeah. get to know each other and learn, of course, but mostly mm -hmm. get to know each other. Yeah. What are you seeing globally when it comes to volunteering and activation? Like, are there, is it, is it growing? Are people getting more engaged? Do millennials care more? Like, what are some of the big trends you're seeing right now in, in volunteering? So one big one I'd say is in corporates yeah. that obviously CSR has taken off a lot more in recent years and, and companies are expected to be more involved in um, issues locally, but also millennials are expecting their companies to be involved. Right. And so especially today, people aren't staying at jobs as long as they used to, mm -hmm. the the checklist of what's expected from your company, I think, now is including this social aspect. And is that, I mean, in first world, yes. that's certainly true. Mm -hmm. Is this also in like the developing nations that are really ramping up? Could be Southeast Asia, African continent, South America. Do you see the same trend? Yeah, may, not as as much, of course, in, as Western developing countries that have the luxury that can demand that from their country, from their company. But it has come to the other, to the developing world as well. I mean, I think in general, um, 
companies are being are more involved in, in their community I mean yeah. definitely regardless of where they are and I think people as well are um, are wanting that and then individual basis same thing yeah I think that that especially today young people are very connected to the issues and want to be involved and can see themselves being involved so I do think volunteering is on the rise and that's also what we're trying to do with with doing good as an easy way to connect the other people mm. right that's who we're, we're trying to, to reach is to connect the other people that maybe see volunteering as a time commitment or they don't want to or they have other things to do but but uh, to connect them with doing good so that they can become part of the kind of that movement okay um, I kind of want to wrap it up and talk a little bit about how do you build a movement like if you look at the things that you did that succeeded that kind of set up the foundation what are the few really key things you guys got right so you went from Israel four or five years of work mm -hmm to 108 in the last eight years? So the first thing is to remove barriers to be part of something. Um, we are all about co-branding. We're all about um, making good deeds they work for you. Like I said, it's not my idea or yeah. someone else's idea. It's about um, how you identify. So great, run with it, mm. make it yours. I think okay. that that was crucial okay that's the main thing I'd say okay and what's maybe something you guys thought would work but didn't that turned out to be like it just slowed you down or you you missed something that could have sped you up so when we started gaining traction in Latin America mm -hmm. and it really started to take off um, we had translated doing good and good deeds day into into Spanish but we had our website in, um, that we were working on and so we rolled out this international website in English yeah. and we thought this would be really key to growth <coughs> in Latin America as it was uh, spreading and yeah. we basically went to our partners and we said look at this website yeah. we created this it's international because of course we had um, <laughs> Hebrew and Arabic and everything no it's you you don't take you don't use English when you're going to Latin America you right. they're they're like mm, this is like this is not international you need a right. website in Spanish yeah. so that caused that made us really take a step back and say okay where are we at so English is is say the international common language but that's not how people are going to relate to to the right, work you right. do and that's not going to be how people relate to to the idea of good deeds that you have to make it accessible for them you have to make right. them f relate to it in their in their specific way yeah. so n that's why our website today is in like 12 languages awesome. because everybody you know you feel better when you you can really see yourself so if you look at our site if you look at everything that we put out it's all um, faces from around the world it's all yeah. in all the languages and when you go to your language you see people from your country yeah. that are joining together it's not just you know one specific look and feel so that was like a big lesson that we learned is uh, what we saw as international yeah. is was really not <laughs> okay. I, mean, I think a lot of people make that make that step in the wrong direction in a way like they just fail to understand that they might have the platform but they need to really work locally to make that happen Absolutely. Um, in person website social media are all of them important? Is one more important than the other for you guys? And then how do you actually communicate all three of them effectively? Because again, you have so many hundreds of events, so many millions of people now. How do you make sure people really take away a sense um, that they've done something that's, that's even global, local and global? Well, first is that all of the events are essentially templates mm -hmm. that each country adapts to their own local feel yeah. but if you look at photos of events or videos from around the world they all look relatively the same yeah. just one might be on a beach one people might be freezing in Russia yeah. but they're all they all look the same and have the same vibe right. uh, so that's one way is uh, is that connectedness 
uh, through social media and on uh, Facebook in particular, we're constantly sharing and constantly connecting people and uh, we're, we're very active in terms of community yeah. there, in terms of uh, starting conversations and, and being a part of it. Yeah. And in person, when we meet people, or when we're working with someone that's setting up Good Deeds Day or running an event, it's important for us to zoom out, to have them understand what they're a part of so that when they do an event or when they run Good Deeds Day, um, they feel that they're part of something bigger and they feel that um, this is really something massive happening. And so then that's part of sharing. So in, in countries around the world, we strive to have uh, leadership, in, whether it's in a, a major city or in a, in a country. So we have either one organization or a couple organizations that are really leading Good Deeds Day. Yeah. And um, ha about half of the countries that we're in have that leadership. So they're um, sharing all the info and, and uh, letting people know from the volunteer themselves to the NGO to the president of the country um, what it's all about and what their impact is. I kind of want to end this in the sense of you know lessons for others. Uh, there are a lot of movements going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Some great ideas, some great people, good timing. Like they, they seem to have everything but they never like get off the ground. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you've seen these. It could be on the internet, it could be what your friends are talking about, whatever. What are, where do you see others failing to really build that momentum to get out of their own little community physically or even like on Facebook to achieve scale? Like where, where do you see others kind of tripping and what are the lessons that they should be learning from you guys? Uh, maybe, I mean the one thing is definitely not having a clear call to action, mm -hmm. not having that thing that people can identify with and that they can say, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Um, a lot of times movements go wrong because they're too complex or they're disorganized or they don't know what they're asking. The other thing is be positive. Yeah. It may sound cliche or silly to say, but um, we can change the world through these positive ideas and positive call to actions and things. Not being against something. If we're against mm -hmm. something, what are we standing for? Yeah. So I think that's really critical today in, in, the, in movements of, you know, we see politically with different protests happening around the world and people yeah. standing up or, or talking about, um, you know, climate change. Or, but what are we asking for? Like, what, what are the things that we are for that we want to see happen not just all the bad stuff because the bad stuff yes it can unite us and we can feel this fury of being against but it doesn't it's not going to lead us to the next step of change and what that means specifically done <laughs> <laughs> that was that was it i got nothing else all right to do. so thank you very much absolutely